Hi, this is Rich Boren with Cruz RO Water and Technotics, and we're continuing our video series where we're highlighting the different modules that are in the Cruz RO Water Maker. So this is what we call Module 1. It's the high pressure pump and motor assembly. So we have the high pressure stainless steel head piston pump with ceramic plungers, and then we have the one horsepower AC motor. The one horsepower motor is using 1100 watts, 9.3 amps at 115 volts, and it's a dual voltage motor. So it can run on either 115 or 220, depending on how you land the wires in the electrical junction box. So what we have on top of the motor are a start and run capacitor. So that gives it a soft start capabilities of a watt saver motor. That's how we're able to make the 20 and the 30 gallon per hour unit run on a Honda 2000 generator or a 2000 watt inverter running off your battery banks. So we're going to review some of the things about this uh, module one and talk about where it needs to be mounted and some of the mounting and operational uh, parameters so you can decide where best to put it on your boat. This is the one horsepower motor. The dimensions for it are on the actual uh, website, but it weighs 44 pounds. So this is the largest piece in terms of weight of the water maker, and it's used in both the 20 and the 30 gallon per hour water maker. The 40 gallon per hour unit uses a one and a half horsepower motor. So it's just about an inch to three quarters of an inch longer same diameter, same physical appearance, it just weighs an additional few pounds. The high pressure pump, whether it's a 1.6 gallon per hour unit that's, that we have here for the 20 and the 30 gallon per hour units, or if it's the 2.3 gallon per minute pump, the physical dimension and shape of the pump is the same. The only thing that's different is the camshaft for the stroke of the piston. The larger stroke of the piston will produce the higher outputs, and that uses a one and a half horsepower motor. Now, that one and a half horsepower motor is going to use 13.3 amps at 115 volts. So that's a little bit too much for the Honda 2000, and it's also a bit too much power to really realistically run off of your battery bank through an inverter. So I think one reason that the SM30 is our most popular selling water maker is that you can run it off a Honda 2000, a diesel gen set, and a 2000 watt inverter so that if your diesel engine was to ever fail on you, your diesel gen set, you'd be able to make water with your uh, alternator running and your inverter. So this high pressure pump on the front of the pump, this is your pressure relief valve. So there's a white fitting here that has a little plug in it right now. This is your relief valve that's preset between 9 and 950 PSI. So if your system was ever taken above its normal operating pressure of 800 PSI, this relief valve would blow before you damaged your membranes. The membranes don't want to see over 1,000, so this pressure relief valve keeps the pressure from ever going above about 950. So the line that's coming out of here is going to be ran into your bilge. Just put a few zip ties on it, secure it into the bilge area, so that if it ever goes off, it'll send that flow into the bilge and, and, protect, it, and protect the pressure vessel that way. You just want to zip tie that line down so it doesn't start snaking as the water's flowing out of it and spraying on things. So the electrical junction here in the front of the box is where you're going to land your wires. So you'll need access to this front plate. You'll also want access to these circular pump heads. Underneath this are caps. You remove that to get access to your valve heads to change and service the valves. So you don't want to mount it up against a bulkhead where you can't access your electrical wiring or for maintenance your pump head. The unit ships with a, a uh, shipping plug for the crankcase. When you get your pump and motor unit, there's going to be a bag zip tied to this relief valve. It's going to have in it a vented cap. You put that vented cap in place after you've done your install. 
and then there's a 3 8 plug that's also in that bag. Just throw that in your bag of parts. It comes with the pump. If we weren't using the relief valve here, we would put a plug in it here. But by having that plug, if you're out cruising and something ever was to happen to your relief valve where it failed, you can remove the valve, put the plug in place, and continue to make water until you get your uh, pressure relief valve replaced. So on the outlet side here, this fitting here is your high pressure hose going to your RO membranes. This is your half inch green line coming from your pre-filters, bringing your seawater into the pump. So in terms of maintenance, you're also going to be changing this pump oil every 500 hours or every season. There's a drain on the bottom, which sometimes, depending on the mounting location, is difficult to access. So you can also suck the oil out of your vent cap. In terms of where this can go, it can go in an engine compartment. It can go in a lazarette or a locker. It's a completely sealed pump unit, but it's an AC motor. So you don't want to have this somewhere where water is going to be splashing on it for obvious electrical reasons. It comes with this mounting foot down on the base of the motor and the pump is suspended. So typically you'll mount this somewhere on a, on a solid platform. The, in, because in terms of the noise, most of the noise from this unit is going to come from the vibration that's transferred into your mounting base. So by having that mounting platform solid instead of a loose flimsy snare drum, you're not going to have as much noise transferred into the boat. Sometimes you can put a piece of rubber material between the motor mount and the platform. That'll help dampen some of that noise. We have our high pressure pump and motor unit mounted underneath our salon couch and we can watch videos without having to turn the volume up. So yes, it's a noise and it's there, but it's not something that's going to run you out of the room and you know send you running out based on the noise level. So in terms of mounting, most people mount it horizontally like this. You can also, if you notice, there's four bolts, two up and on the top, two on the bottom, stainless steel bolts. bolts. They connect the pump to the motor. So if you would like to mount this thing on a bulkhead, you can rotate it 90 degrees where the mount is now on the back. The, these capacitors would be forward. You undo these bolts, rotate this pump head 90 degrees, so in this picture it would be pointing straight up. Then when you mount it on a wall, it'll be level. Because this needs to be mounted level since it is a vented cap. So you can mount it onto a bulkhead. It just needs to be a substantial bulkhead because this is 44 pounds of, of copper, basically. In terms of uh, temperature, yeah, I mentioned it can go in an engine room under a locker, a lazarette. This, this fan is going to be pulling air this way and blowing it over the unit. There's a thermal breaker so that if it ever gets too hot, it's going to trip itself off to protect itself. So if it's in a space that is just barely the size of this box, yeah, it's probably going to overheat. So you need to put it in a place that's a large enough volume where it can dissipate the heat from its operation. When this unit's in operation and it's reached its steady state of temperature after about 30 minutes, it'll be about 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll run hot. So if, if it goes in a very small locker where you're having problems with the thermal overload cutting out, you can go ahead and put a fan to where whenever you supply power to this, you can supply a blower into the locker to cool it down. So in terms of, of running, I get the question quite often, you know, I, I don't have a gen set, I like your water maker, I like your, your concept, can I run this just off of my solar panel and batteries? Well, the problem is this 9.3 amp, 115 volt motor, it's going to use 90 amps, a 12 volt DC. So if you have lithium ion batteries, of course you can, no problem. Run it through a 2000 watt inverter. We have plenty of clients doing that. But if you're trying to run your boat without a gen set, 
running a 90 amp DC load, that's just going to be too big for your lead acid battery bank. So it's not really realistic to have you know 400 amp watts of solar and run this through your battery bank. It's really something, once you go with a piston pump, you've really kind of went down the path of a Honda 2000 or a diesel gen set or running your alternator to run to help supply power through your 2000 watt inverter. In terms of rotation on the high pressure pump, when you're looking into this sight glass on the end of the pump, it should be spinning counterclockwise. So in the manual on the electrical diagram, it shows you that if you look into this sight glass and it's spinning clockwise, you can go ahead and switch to T5 and the T8 wire and that will change the rotation of the motor. From a technical standpoint, it really doesn't matter which direction the motor is spinning. The pump is going to function properly in either direction. I like to have everyone wiring it the same. That way, if we have some electrical troubleshooting issues, we're looking at the same wires and specking the same uh, wire labels without having a, a confusion. One of the common questions I get about the high pressure pump and motor, and especially people that are new to water makers and they're new to the unit, is how do I damage it? What, what can I do that can damage this pump and motor unit? I don't want to damage it, so let me know what I can do or what will damage it so I can take good care of it. Uh, first, since this is an AC motor, of course you don't want to mount this in a location where it's getting doused with seawater that obviously wouldn't be good for it. But the number one thing that damages high pressure pumps is the high pressure pumps don't like to suck. This doesn't want to have to pull seawater into it. So the, it's very important that the boost pump, the pre-filters, the low pressure side of the system that's feeding this high pressure pump is working properly and you always have a positive supply of boost pump pressure pushing the seawater into the high pressure pump. The seawater actually lubricates and cools the ceramic plungers in your pistons. So with operating without seawater, they're going to get hot and you can actually melt and damage your packing. If that happens, the good thing is that the packing is something you can change yourself in the field. So it's not going to require the pump to be sent back for a major overhaul. It's just, you know, it's pretty intimidating the first time you take a pump apart. But there's a YouTube video showing the rebuilding of this pump. And a pump packing kit is, a, is about 100 bucks, 115 The valves are about 100 So that's one thing I like about the General Pump. They're made in Minnesota. They have a very good reputation for durability. Other than running them dry, you're going to get 7 to 10 years of trouble-free life expectancy out of this high pressure pump between what would be considered a normal rebuild cycle. So that's why a lot of the high pressure water maker companies that use piston pump are using this general pump brand out of Minnesota.